Welcome back into another episode of the Sick Podcast. Steelers, crazy, very happy to be joining you. Of course, I am Mike Nicastro. Follow me on Twitter at Mike Up Sports One. This is my guy at Jordan York Music. Jordan, how you feeling today? I'm good, man. I'm I'm ready to go. Uh, we have a great guest. Uh, Going to start bringing on some draft prospects and former Steelers, and uh, ready to rock and roll, man. It's off season, but we're here all year round at Steeler Crazy. Yeah, I tell you what, I'm excited. We're going to talk a little Steelers with this guest, but I'm going to go a little unconventional for us. I'm going to talk a little Penguins and Pirates as well. Why not? We're a Pittsburgh podcast when it's all said and done. Sammy, roll it. We're excited. Turn up your volume. Because you're about to listen to The Sick Podcast. Steelers Crazy. Harris Smith Shields. Blacko Polamalu takes it home. Super Bowl 43. Pittsburgh might be bound for that thanks to number 43. The sickest Pittsburgh Steelers podcast. Sports entertainment like no other. It's going to be sick. So basically, if you turn on your dialer anywhere in Pittsburgh, if you're driving, listening to the radio, you're likely to hear our next guest voice. She's on KDKA Radio. You can hear on 93.7 The Fan as well. We're excited to welcome in Shelby Cassessi. What's up, Shelby? How are you? I need to scoot over. We've we've already had some issues today getting me on here. So, all right, front and center. There we go. (laughs) That's showbiz at the end of the day. That is. There's not technical difficulties, right? Yeah, it's not. Listen, without technical difficulties, uh, it's not fun. And I'm sure you've had quite a few in your day. <laughs> the radio On a daily basis. As well. I think we all have. <laughs> yeah, so so you're used to it. Shelby, we're so happy to have you on once more. I want to jump right into it. Let's get into the huge news of the day. Okay. Mm-hmm. Punxsutawney Phil sees his shadow. You got six more weeks of winter up there. How you feeling? That guy always sees his shadow. We're always getting six more weeks of winter in Pittsburgh. I feel like it's a given. I feel like if anyone's expecting spring to come anytime soon before, what, the end of April, then they're sadly mistaken. Yeah, those pirate games in April, I feel like when I was growing (laughs) up, used to be like like on the cooler side. Now you're going with like earmuffs and 15 degree weather, which uh, changed pretty quickly. Hey, for anybody that... Might not know your work, your background. Do us a favor. Tell us a little bit about how you kind of got into this industry and, and you know, where they can find you now. Yeah. So um, started things off kind of at Duquesne University. That's where I went to school for four years. Knew I wanted to study broadcast journalism. Knew I wanted to get into sports. And um, actually, one of my internships while I was in school was here at 93.7 The Fan. So um, it's been kind of a full circle moment in terms of working for them. But after school, worked in uh, Bridgeport, West Virginia for two years as a sports reporter for Channel 5 News down there. I got to cover a lot of Mountaineers, a lot of local sports. And then when my time was up there, was a little bit homesick, wanted to come back to Pittsburgh and um, got a part-time opportunity here at the radio station that allowed me to do all sorts of stuff, news, traffic, do sports updates when the fan was doing the updates every 20 minutes back a few years ago, um, moved over to news pretty much full time at KDK TV for a year and a half. And then a full time opportunity came up here um, in news. So I'm doing that full time five days a week. But I've been adding a lot more sports back into my repertoire. I've been hosting a show on 93.7 The Fan. On weekends, I do a weekly feature on The Fan called This Hits Different, where we profile inspiring stories in local sports. On uh, nightly sports call on Sunday nights with Bob Pompiani on KDK TV, and I'm doing some freelance work for the Steelers. So, a little bit of everything right now, and um, but excited to hopefully continue to grow on the sports side. Absolutely crushing it. No idea how you found time to jump <laughs> yeah. on with us um, through all Always that. Always time. <laughs> do you have, do you have country roads stuck in your head sometimes for your time in uh, West Virginia? I definitely uh, not to expose myself to all the Pitt fans out there, Uh-oh. but I definitely throw it on in the car every once in a while. I my best friend actually ended up meeting a guy when she was coming down to visit me one night in Morgantown. Met a guy, they're now married, been together like eight years, and of course, he's a big Mountaineer fan, and their wedding ended with a big rendition of Country Road. So yeah, it's a little, it's close to my heart at the end of the day. So yeah, throw it on every once in a while. 
Yeah, definitely. So let's uh, move over to the Steelers. Uh, just talk about the job that Mike Tomlin did this year, you know, starting two and six and ending the season. Obviously, we missed the playoffs, but to end the season with a rookie quarterback going into the new year, um, just kind of talk about that. I think like the remainder of the team, the first half of the year was pretty rough. I think uh, I disagree with the way he handled the quarterback situation, and we can always get into that later. But I, I thought that he went to Kenny Pickett in a really, really difficult time where he could have given him more opportunity to acclimate himself. But once the bye happened, there just seemed to be something about this team that clicked, whether it be Kenny Pickett um, starting to settle in, whether it be the offensive line starting to get cohesion, whether it be TJ Watt coming back. But I appreciated the job Mike Tomlin did with these guys. I think Mike Tomlin often doesn't get a lot of credit. I look back at the a b years and and so much that has come out about him in the following years where people think wow mike tomlin did a really good job with antonio brown when we didn't realize he, des it. he deserves an award for that yeah. that alone and i think a lot of i think that is the case a lot of times with mike tomlin where he gets piled on when things are bad but he doesn't necessarily get a ton of credit when things are going really great i get the winning season thing is is really not uh as a non-starter for a lot of steelers fans it's a non-starter for me too but at the end of the day he is being consistent with this team and i think at the end of the year he was able to get these guys in moving in the right direction and with a team with the changes that they made in the previous off season i think that's what you had to ask for is just a trend upwards and we got that yeah, so talk about the rookie quarterback, Kenny Pickett. Obviously, he was a rookie when he came in. You know, I, I say this all the time that Pittsburgh fans are spoiled. They act, you know, you lose a <laughs> Hall of Fame quarterback and they think that, you know, you're going to go 17-0 uh, to the next season. Um, I, I watched uh, Kenny Pickett when I covered Pitt and, and got to meet him a few times. Just an mm -hmm. all-around great guy. So I was, I, it was like a dream. I had to pinch myself when – uh, we drafted him. So uh, just kind of just wanted to get your take on Kenny Pickett. I think he absolutely sees the opportunity. He started out in a pretty difficult situation, and I referred to it in talking about Mike Tomlin, but there was a point there where the Steelers could have installed him into the offense before the Jets game. They had a 10-day break, and they didn't. They went with Mitch Trubisky again, despite not seeing a whole lot to love there. And then they go to Kenny Pickett at halftime of that game. You put him in his rookie year during halftime of a football game when you could have had 10 days to install him. And he had never taken reps with the ones prior to that in in-season in practice. That to me was really poor mismanagement of the Steelers quarterback situation. It wasn't an easy situation. I mean, you're right. You lose a franchise quarterback after 20 years. Mm -hmm. Now you have two guys competing for the starting job who had never been with the Pittsburgh Steelers. So it's a difficult thing to navigate. But that was mismanagement. I think it set him up for a rough start. He had a rough start. But then you started to see the mistakes happen a little bit less. You started to see him get more comfortable in the pocket. You started to see him make his progressions a little bit more clearly week after week. It was, was not always perfect. It was pretty much never perfect. But yeah. what I think we saw was growth. And what you saw, which I think inherently lied in him the whole time, was this ability to just not blink in those tough situations. Uh, a game-winning drive on Christmas Eve on the night you're honoring Franco Harris, who just passed away a couple of days prior. I mean, that's not blinking. Those are the moments that you want to see in a franchise quarterback. You got those intangibles from him. Now you got to see that progress continue where he takes better control of the offense, continues to get more confident and develop those relationships with his receivers, which I think we saw the start of. Yeah, I tell everyone if I had to pick one quarterback in the NFL this season with two minutes left to win the game, I think my answer <laughs> would be Kenny Pickett. Hey, um, yeah. Uh, but uh, just just before I switch it over to Mike, I know he has some questions to end it. And again, we appreciate you. You're watching the Steelers Crazy Sick podcast. Make sure you give us a follow. Um, just what are the biggest positives going into the 2023 season? OTAs, the draft, whatever, whatever you think is the most positive thing right now in Steeler land? I think I'm, you know, and this might not be what people feel is one of the more positive things, but I think the offense is in a really good position personnel wise. We just gushed about Kenny Pickett. You know what he can do. Mm -hmm. You know that he's in, in a position to keep growing. I've heard people advocate to go out aggressively in the draft and find some more offensive weapons. 
I don't necessarily think that needs to be at the top of the wish list for the Steelers. I think that they are pretty set when it comes to offensive weapons. I know Deontay Johnson hasn't quite lived up to the expectation that he had, but he can still be an effective pass catcher for you. George Pickens, what can you say about him? He's a freak. He's going to continue to grow. Pat Fryermuth is the top tight end that we all expect him to be. Mm -hmm. Now you have Connor Hayward, who is coming into yeah. his own as an, a good number two tight end. Najee Harris had an excellent post by season, and you have the one-two punch with Jalen Warren. That's a lot to choose from for Kenny Pickett. And so because you have that set now for the Steelers, and I'm putting this out into the atmosphere, I am willing it to happen. I've said it enough times that I'm hoping I will it to happen in the draft. You can go after the boring draft picks. You can go after the offensive linemen. You can go mm -hmm. after the inside linebackers because that's what they need. The good news is I think they have their stars. Now you have to go after the guys, like I said, the boring draft picks, the ones yes. that aren't so flashy but are absolutely needed. I agree. Yeah, me too. We had former Steelers offensive lineman Trey Essex on the show recently. And listen, an offensive lineman is going to say, I want the team to take an offensive lineman. <laughs> but he was absolutely adamant that this offensive line needs an alpha dog, somebody yes. who can you know, be a real presence in that huddle to kind of just evoke some leadership even from a young age and grow with Kenny Pickett and this young offense. So I'm on your side. I could not agree more. All right. I mentioned Trey Essex. We always have some Steelers-related guests, some draft prospects. It's not all the time we get a Pittsburgh reporter like yourself. We don't always branch out, and, and that okay. makes Jordan and I sad sometimes because we love the Pirates and the Penguins. So I'm just going to hit you with this first and foremost. I am overjoyed. Uh, my younger self in high school and college, uh, the Pirates were my favorite team. They still hold that special place in my heart like Country Roads does for you. <laughs> Andrew McCutcheon is back. How cool yes. is that? So cool. So, I mean, it's one of those things where if you're not a fan of the move or if you're really sour about it or you or you say something like, well, it's not going to do anything, they're still going to lose 100 games, then you just don't want to let people enjoy fun things because mm -hmm. this is just one of those moves that should be accepted by everyone. From the PR perspective, from the feel-good perspective, from the homecoming story perspective, it's obviously fantastic. Now, he's an older guy. He's not going to be the guy he was when he was last with the Pirates. But he still had a decent season with Milwaukee last year. He can still produce. And from more of an intangible perspective, he is the veteran leadership this this clubhouse has needed for a very, very long time. Not as he just a, a veteran that's been there, done that, but he's been there, done that with a Pirates team that hasn't been there, done that very much in the last 30 years. So mm -hmm. I think he is just the best ambassador for Pittsburgh baseball that you can ask for. It's something that he wanted to do. It's something the Pirates wanted to do. It's something people have been asking for him to return and for Mark andre Fleury to return since they both left. You now have one of those two people back. And I think as much as the Pirates gets people down, enjoy this moment and appreciate it for what it is because one of the greatest modern Pirates has come back. We are hanging out with Shelby Cassessi here on the Sick Podcast, Steelers Crazy I'm down in South Florida right now. I'm excited. I am going to be at an NHL Fanfare event Robin tonight. In. The All-Star Game is here. Wow. Be working that. It's a good transition to the Penguins, I think, mm -hmm. because this is a team that kind of feels like they need a break. Uh, they've been struggling of late. Obviously, Tristan Jari not being in net. A big reason why. You think they can turn it around, Shelby? Not with what they're doing right now. You can't expect for... I think this break to just completely flip them around and give them a 180 and they're, they're bad because of complacency. I think within the franchise right now, they're bad because they predicate their game on the same things they predicated it on when they were winning Stanley cups, except they're older, they're slower and they have less depth. And so it's really difficult to watch because we've watched this play out, I think slowly, but surely over the past couple of years with all of the early playoff exits and now we're really seeing it play out. We, I mean, they have, um, they take a lot of odd man rushes. They give up really, really early leads. They give up really, really late leads. And it just continues to be more and more frustrating. The Tristan Jari situation is too. And, and you begin to really, really question if the Penguins will move on from him. It feels, it feels harsh too, because it's not for a lack of performing, but it's a lack of availability. And you question, when does it, when is the time to move on from a guy for a lack of availability? But I think it's getting to that point with Tristan Jari. The backup goaltending situation with Casey DeSmith has never quite 
um, gotten its potential out of it either. So goaltending, I think, is going to be a huge priority for the Penguins, either by the trade deadline, if they're going to make a playoff push, or especially once the offseason rolls around. But this Penguins team needs more than a little bit of a break to turn it around. They need a mindset change, certainly, and maybe a move or two from GM Ron Hextall to light a fire under these guys. All right, I need to get you out of here on this. I obviously did a little Twitter searching. Okay. And personally, right, for a long time, I have considered myself a ranch dressing connoisseur. Yes. Oh, my I gosh. I think I invent – I like to tell people that I was the first one ever to put ranch dressing on pizza. <laughs> and now every time you order a pizza, people are getting it with it. I was doing it in, like, fourth grade. I can attest to that. I, okay. Yeah. I, I, I like never I went that far. Heads. I was never okay. a ranch on pizza, except for buffalo chicken pizza. I, I'm not Fair. a ranch on pizza gal. But, yes, ranch connoisseur nonetheless. So, I got to – I mean, I got to ask, are we hidden fat? No free – Shout outs, promos. Are we Hidden Valley? Are we Kraft? Are we Buttermilk? Mm-hmm. Are, I mean, where, where are you taking this if you have some, I don't know, chicken tenders, fries, cheese sticks, whatever it may be? So if I have to grab a bottle at the store, it's Ken's Steakhouse Ranch for sure. Ken's. Got uh-huh. it. Yep. And, but I've actually recently been trying my own homemade stuff every now and again. And it's kind of a pain to make and it goes bad pretty quickly. So it's not always super worth it to make. But uh, a, a good homemade ranch is always good too. But the easy stuff out of the bottle, it's Ken's for sure. I'm going to have to get some tips. The classic packets. I've never – actually, I think I did it one time, made my own ranch, and it came out terribly. But that's just because <laughs> I have absolutely no savvy when it comes to cooking whatsoever. I think you got to forego the packets and just buy your own spices for it. It's like, you know, I don't like to think of things having mayonnaise in them, but ranch, unfortunately, right. that is a that is a huge ingredient in ranch. But the mayonnaise and, you know, throw some dill in there, some buttermilk, um, onion powder, garlic powder – and then you just kind of taste test, um, you know, follow the recipe and then taste test a little bit to get it to where you want to go. Got it. She's the best ranch expert, <laughs> but first and foremost, of course, sports expert there in Pittsburgh. KDK Radio 93.7, the fan. Shelby Cassessi. Shelby, such a pleasure. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank and you, guys, thank you so much. It was such a pleasure. Yeah, anytime. You're the best. Thanks Take so much. Care. Jordan, really cool stuff. Anytime we get somebody from uh, in the Pittsburgh media circle, obviously it's always a pleasure to pick their brain a little bit and uh, no better than Shelby. That's for sure. Yeah, she was awesome. And, you know, I hear her on the fan all the time. She does the news. She does it all. Jack of all trades, uh, ranch lover. So I like <laughs> ranch too. I'm more now at my old age, I turned uh, honey mustard and barbecue. Um, so that that's my honey mustard's my go-to now the chick-fil-a honey mustard is is the best i know i was the ranch guy my parents were buying me books at like the age of 10 that were like i put ranch on everything that was my franks i put that blank on everything that was ranch for me so i had to uh of of course bring that up and you know what else i got to bring up something very 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 important all right over here at the sick podcast dealers we are partnering with my bookie all right Sammy, I'm going to tell everybody a little bit about this, but first, let's give us that sick graphic. It's time for Sick Picks, brought to you by MyBookie. All right, you asked for it, and they listened. MyBookie has designed a unique deposit bonus that lets you cash in and cash out quick. This is a unique deposit bonus for sports bettors like us who want to focus on what to bet and not a payout sweat. That's good stuff right there. I need you guys. Seriously. I mean, you got to get in on the action. We have so much good stuff coming up. Right. College basketball, March Madness, I should say. Oh, March uh, Madness, Super man. I'm going to be dumping NBA a lot of playoffs, money into my account. NHL playoffs. Make your first deposit today. Use our promo code. You see it right there. Sick Picks. picks. Our promo code, Sick Picks. Wager your deposit amount once and you're eligible to cash out, which is really, really nice. I know it can be a pain sometimes to get cash outs from some of these sites. My bookie makes it so easy. Pre-game, live lines, Super Bowl props, as I mentioned. You could bet the opening coin toss, the Gatorade color, the, you yeah. know, who. The coin flip. MVP. It's a 50-50 chance. First, I've lost, I've won, I should say, a lot of money on these. Last year, I won a lot of money on these. Pick Cooper Cup to win Super Bowl MVP. That paid off fruitfully. Uh, I can tell you where I'm pay- placing my bets. I don't know who's going to win MVP just yet, but I'm placing them at my bookie anytime, anywhere, my 
bookie. Sick picks, man. And I also want anybody who's betting or using that, hit me in my DMs right away at Mike Up Sports One or hit up at Jordan York Music. Ask me, Mike, who are you going with tonight? I've generally been successful. I watch a lot of sports over here, not just Steelers and football, NBA, everything, NHL, down to some NASCAR even. So hit us up, right, JY? This is exciting. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm excited to partner. Um, my bookie, I mean, I was on the site, I, the app, download it. Uh, just remember the sick picks and make sure you message us because we will give you our sick picks as always. My bookie, it's the best in the business. It is the absolute best in the business. Listen, now that we're here, I got to throw out a sick pick, right? I told you I'm in South Florida. Miami Heat tonight are at the New York Knicks. Big game for both teams. Heat are trying to ride the wave a little bit. They've had some momentum. Knicks have been pretty good. Jalen Brunson, a big standout for them. Uh, and they got a big win the other night. Uh, I think it was over the Boston Celtics. I'm going with the Heat, though. Minus two in New York. The Heat are going to cover that. They're going to win that game by more than four points. And we're going to show this clip everywhere. So you can DM me and hit me up at Mike Up Sports One for more picks. My bookie, that's what it's called. It's been a wonderful show today, Jordan. Was really happy to do it with Shelby Cassessi. Tell everybody what we got coming up in the future weeks. How sick is this going to be? Yeah, I mean, we have, we're doing a whole draft highlight. Uh, I, I was just talking to some of the guys. They wanted to hop on this morning uh, in between uh, senior bowl practice. So we're going to have some uh, Steeler draft uh, mock drafts. I know you probably have 74 mock drafts already. I haven't um, started yet. Are crazy. I won't let com. myself. Once I start, I won't stop. It's like Pringles. Yeah. I mean, uh, and Pitt, shout out Pitt basketball with another big win tonight, man. I mean, I haven't, it's been uh, almost a decade, uh, you know, so I'm excited for that. It's just a good time for Pittsburgh sports. Uh, if the Penguins can get it together, but here at Steve, we're crazy, man. I mean, the draft, you know, before you know it, preseason will be here and uh, Kenny Pickett will be on his, uh, road to uh, uh seven super bowl for the steelers you heard it here first on steelers crazy good enough for me thanks for listening thanks for watching download us favorite podcast platform tell a friend to tell a friend see ya and that's a wrap hope you don't miss us too much until next time follow the sick podcast steelers crazy on youtube instagram facebook google play and apple podcasts